Charissa. Charissa is a graduate of All Roberts University and the University of Michigan. Very fine young lady. Okay, get your Bibles, your notebooks, and your iPads. Let's go to work. This is our last session. And as soon as I'm finished, I am have, I'm having to leave. As you know, my aircraft is waiting for me, so we'll have to uh, beg our leave. But since you've been so nice to me, I'm coming back to, to this place. I'm coming back to Brooklyn. Uh, oh, the Bronx. The Bronx. Okay. Where's your character? I'm coming back to the Bronx. Is that better? All right, all right, all right. Amen. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about prayer. The most misunderstood activity in the church is prayer. And I want to focus for a few minutes on the kingdom principle of petitioning. Write that down. Understanding the purpose and the power of prayer. Focusing on the kingdom principle of petitioning. In order to understand prayer, you must understand the kingdom. If you take the concept of prayer outside of the context of the kingdom, the result will be a religious activity. And prayer is not a religious activity. I'm going to prove that now. Let's begin with a few statements I want you to remember and to write down. Prayer is the most misunderstood kingdom concept. Prayer is. Most people who pray don't know how to pray. I used to be among them. Secondly, prayer is the most important kingdom activity on earth. That's a paradox. It's the most misunderstood, but it's also the most important. Because prayer is an ambassador's number one responsibility. I will explain this to you. Now, there's a statement made by John Wesley, and I think it's an important statement. I believe that John Wesley understood something about prayer that few people understood. When I understood it, my entire life changed. Here's what he says. He says, it seems that without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. What did he mean by that? It's a very important statement. Without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. What he means is this. It seems that on earth, Man can do nothing without God. But there is also another reality. And that is God will do nothing on earth without man. So the principle is there has to be a partnership between heaven and earth in order for things to happen on earth. So what happens on earth depends on you. And that is literally true. To understand prayer then, here is my simple definition of prayer. And it took me about 35 years to write this one sentence.
Prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. Prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. What does that mean? Prayer is not an option for the believer. Prayer is a necessity. I want to repeat, prayer is not a religious activity. Prayer is a legal activity. But you cannot understand this unless you understand the kingdom concept. Let's take it a step further. I call this the power of the human. Write that down. The most powerful creature on earth is you, the human. How did be, that this become like this? First of all, God only gave legal authority to earth, on earth to humans. Legal authority to humans. Question, what is a human? What I'm about to explain to you will probably be the most important discovery of your life. And it's this. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. Say it, I am a spirit. I am a spirit. That's important. You don't have one. You are spirit. But you live in a dirt body. God carved your body from the dust. So your body is one hundred percent dirt. That is why when you leave your body, we dump it back in the dirt. Yeah. Now whether your dirt is dark or light or yellow or red or brown, it's nothing but dirt. So don't ever measure your worth by your dirt. <laughs> a human is a, a spirit being in a dirt body. Now, let me explain how that works. The word humus, write it down, is the word for dirt. Humus is dirt. Humus is dirt. Man is different. Man is the spirit being. The Hebrew word for man is the word I-S-H. Write it down. It's the word ish. So in the book of Genesis, when God said, let us make man, he used the word ish. Let us create ish. That's the spirit being. So you are a spirit. Man is a spirit. His body is humus. Dirt. Then God took the man and put him in the dirt, the humus. So you then became known as a humus man. We don't write it with two words, but that's, it's two words put together. It is humus man. They drop the middle syllabus, syllable rather, and they simply call it human. Are you with me? Say it, I am, a human. I am a human. What is a human? A human is a mystery. A human is a spirit being in a dirt body. So you are called a humus man or a human. So when you use the term human, it's not a simple term. It means it's a combination between a spirit 
on a dirt body. Are you still with me? All this is important to prayer. So when God created the human race, he put the spirit being in a dirt body. Then God said to the human, have dominion over the earth. Let them have dominion over the earth. Them who? Humans. What is a human? A spirit in a dirt body. This is very important. So the only being that has legal rights on earth to function, given by God to dominate, is a spirit in a dirt body. God's word can never change. So here is the mystery. Write this down. Any spirit without a dirt body is illegal on earth. Now, that's why you don't understand the Bible too well. Because if you don't understand this concept, the Bible will not make sense to you including the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Carnation is from the word carnal. Carnal means dirt. Incarnation means a spirit and a dirt. Became a human. So any spirit Spirit without a dirt body is illegal on earth. What did I say? Okay. So now you know why demons are illegal. Your most powerful weapon that you possess is not your spirit. The most powerful weapon you possess on earth is your body. Listen carefully. This is why when you lose your body, even you become illegal. You have to leave. We call it death. Spirits never die. So you never die. It's your body that died. And when you lose your body, you have to leave. Absent from the body, you're gone. So the most powerful weapon you have on earth is your body. Because, write this down, your body keeps you legal on earth. This is why demons are trying to enter your body. They are trying to become legal. So demon possession is simply a Demonic spirit trying to use your body to become legal so they can do functioning on earth. That is why you can cast them out because they have no legal authority. Because you have a body, you can cast demons out because you have the authority. Are you following me slowly? Okay, write this down. God chose to make himself illegal on earth. (laughs) I'm trying to explain prayer to you. Now watch how it works. God said, let them have dominion over the earth. Let who? Them. What did God say? Let them. He didn't say let us have dominion. He didn't include himself.
God did not have a dirt body. He gave that to you. Then God created a law. The law said, let them have dominion over the earth. When God speaks, every word becomes law. And God himself will never violate his own law. If he did, you could never trust him. So God needs humans <laughs> in order for him to interfere in earth so that he doesn't break his own law. Therefore, Nothing on earth can happen without the cooperation of a human. That is how powerful you are. God himself cannot interfere in this planet without your license and permission that he gave you. Now I know this sounds so unbelievable. But if you don't understand this, that is why your prayers are not being answered. You've been praying a long time and you're still broke, broke and sick and can't pay your bills. You've been confessing scripture and they haven't been coming to pass. And it's because you are waiting for God to do something. Take a deep breath. Tell your neighbor, I am that important. <laughs> It'll make sense in a moment. Stay with me. I want to give you what I call the seven principles of prayer. Write them down. Number one, the legal authority to dominate earth was given to humans. That's a principle. Number two, God did not include himself in the legal authority structure on earth. He said, let them have dominion. So he took himself out of the equation. That's why Radha means sovereign rule. You are the sovereign on earth, not God. That is not because God is weak. It's not because God is sovereign or not sovereign. It is because God will never break his own word. Third principle. Man became the legal steward of earthly domain. You are the legal regent on earth. What is man? A human. A spirit in a dirt body. Principle number four. Only spirits in a physical body is legal on earth. Principle number five, any spirit without a dirt body is illegal on earth. That includes God himself. I know it's hard to understand this. But God will not break his word. Principle number six. Any supernatural influence on earth is only legal through a humus man. A human. Let me ask you a question that you probably never thought of. When Eve was about to pick the fruit. Why didn't God stop her? Have you ever thought about these questions? God could have saved us a whole lot of problems 
if he could have just stopped that skinny woman from picking that <laughs> stupid fruit, he could have saved the whole human race. Follow me, man. It makes sense. He heard the conversation between her and the devil. He was watching the whole thing. He sees everything. Question, why didn't he interfere? This is an important question. You mean an almighty, powerful, omnipotent God could not stop a skinny female from picking the fruit? Well, now you know why. Because if God had come in and interfered with that operation, he would have violated his word and we could never trust him again. Now, let's explain the devil for a minute. Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, is a spirit being. Am I right? Yes. So he's illegal. What does he do? He wants to do business on earth, but he needs a body. So he goes to the serpent. He negotiates with the serpent. The serpent is what? 100% dirt. He came from the dirt, remember? Made from the earth. So he tells the, the, the serpent, loan me your body for a few minutes so I could be temporarily illegal on, illegal on earth and do business with this woman. Jesus. And the Bible says, the Lord God cursed the serpent because he allowed the devil Jesus. to enter his body. Wow. The the serpent, the snake, used to walk upright on legs. Did you know that? So God cursed him and told him, from now on, you won't walk upright anymore because you allowed the devil to possess your body. You will crawl in the dust for the rest of your life. And thus we see them on the ground. My point is, Satan needed a dirt body. He does business with this woman through this dirt body. And the whole human race was about to fall and God could not get involved. Not because he was weak, not because he was not powerful, not because he's not omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, almighty, powerful Jehovah God, but because he is too faithful to his word. You could say that the fall of man was because of God's faithfulness. It's too deep for you. And the devil knew it. Now remember, Satan used to live with God. Mm -hmm. He knows him very well. Mm -hmm. And Satan knows, Lucifer knows, that God will never break his word. Mm -hmm. So Satan was glad when God said, let them have dominion. Because mm -hmm. he knew he wouldn't come in. <clears throat> and what happened? The whole human race collapsed and we declared independence from the kingdom of heaven and became a colony without a kingdom we lost our father and our government now the bible says even the holy spirit had to leave he could no longer strive with men remember that verse okay why because the holy spirit is a spirit he needs a body, so he had to leave. Now, if you study the Old Testament, there is no incident in the, whole, in the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit ever lived in a human. Why? Illegal. So when the prophets prophesied, for example, they never possessed the Holy Spirit. The Bible said he would come upon them, they would prophesy, he would leave. Why? He couldn't live in them because the body was contaminated. He could not stay on earth. Mm -hmm. 
And here we are in Genesis chapter 3 now. The whole thing fell apart. Now God cannot come in, but Satan forgot that God could still talk. So God in verse 15 of Genesis chapter 3 begins to talk to Satan. He's not talking to, to, to Adam. And he says to the devil, verse 15, I'm going to paraphrase it for you. He said, Satan, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty good. You, you know I can't come in. You're right about that. I can't come in as a spirit because that'll break my law. He said, but I'll make you a promise. Watch him now. I'll make you a promise, devil, he says. I promise you, he says, that the same woman you used to mess this up. Watch him now. I'm going to use that same woman. She's going to give me a body. I'm going to come in legally and I'm going to crush your head. Somebody ought to shout. That was the promise. Now you know why God had to become a man. Give him a hand. He's a good God. The entire Old Testament, in my simple view, is simply a complete repetition of God's promise. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. That's all it is. And when we got to Isaiah, Isaiah got some details. Isaiah said, I see more than just coming. He said, the virgin shall be with child. Watch him now. And she shall conceive and bring forth a son. And his name, watch this now, shall be called Im, which means in, man, which means mankind. El is Elohim. God inside a man's body. Give God a hand for Emmanuel. Oh, glory, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah! Everybody say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God inside a man's body. The next chapter of Isaiah, chapter 9, it says, For unto you a child will be born. Not the son now, the son is never born. <laughs> for unto you a child will be born don't confuse the child with the son Mary is not the mother of the son she's the mother of the child the child is the body For unto you a child will be born, but the son ain't going to be born, God says. I'm going to give that son. I'm going to put that son inside the child. The child will be the dirt body. The son is Elohim, Jehovah. So the child will make the son legal. Write it down. I just gave some pastors their sermon for tomorrow. <laughs> and 4,000 years later, it says, in the fullness of time, God sent 
his son, born of a woman. And the angel said to Mary, uh, you shall conceive and you shall bear a son. You're going to call the child, it says, the words of the angel is very specific. You're going to call the child Jesus, Yeshua, which means Savior. So you're going to name the, the child, but you ain't going to name the son. He's already named. He is Christ. But the child will be called Jesus. That's the body. So Jesus made Christ legal. Write it down. So Jesus was 100% man. And Christ is one hundred percent God and Satan didn't know what to do with that God came into the human race legally now he can do business without breaking his own law come on somebody That's the whole point of the incarnation. Now, I didn't come to teach on that. I just want you to understand it, but I want you to understand this point. That's why God could not interfere when Eve was about to pick the fruit. He was protecting his integrity. And that is why God needs you. Because you have a body, God needs you to do anything on earth. Now, I don't want to get into arguments with you. I want you to go and read the Bible again, all over again by yourself, with this understanding, and the Bible will change right before your eyes. Now you'll understand why, for example, everything God did, he needed a human to cooperate with him. Because the human had the legal authority. You know, when God wanted to judge Sodom and Gomorrah, the question is why God couldn't just judge them? He's God, he's sovereign almighty. It's, he was illegal. So he went to a man named Abraham. He said, Abraham, look, I got a problem with Sodom and Gomorrah, and I want to judge them, but I can't do, do it because I'll be illegal. So I need you to give me permission to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. When Abraham figured it out, oh, Lord, have mercy. You don't understand. When Abraham figured out, wait a minute, you need me to judge that city? Abraham says, let's start making a deal. <laughs> Come on, give God a hand. That's awesome power. Amen. Abraham says, I got that much power? Then let's make a deal. Amen. If I could find 50 righteous men, he says. God says, I can't touch it. He says, what about 40? God says, you're the boss. He says, what about 30? God says, keep on dealing. How about 20? God says, you're the one in charge. I got the power, but you got the authority. And Abraham says, if I could find one righteous man in that city, you cannot destroy it. God says, you got it right. I can't touch it until you give me permission. So Abraham says, I'll be right back. And he went <laughs> to Sodom. He found his nephew. He said, Lord, let's get out of here because I am about to give God permission. Come on. Everybody say, Power! Power. I got it! I 
That's what prayer is. Prayer is man giving God permission to interfere in earth's affairs. And when Lord came out, God said, Abe, can I do it now? Abe says, go for it, brother. I'm gone. (laughs) And God went, thank you very much. And he burned the city up. You turn the pages, you meet another guy. God says, uh, I have heard the cries of the Egyptians hurting the Israelites. And I want to come down and deliver them. But I can't do it because I'm a spirit. I need a human to give me permission. See, you all don't understand Moses. So God goes to Moses and said, Moses, look, I want to do something, but I can't come in without your permission. I want to set the Israelites free. Will you do business with me? And Moses started arguing because he's from the Bronx. (laughs) He started telling God, I'm from the wrong family. I ain't got the right color skin. I can't talk. God said, just shut your mouth, man. I got to use somebody. I just need any human, just a human to let me do it. You don't understand your power. Why couldn't God just go in and set them free by himself? Illegal. You wonder why God tolerates you? Say, neighbor, I got the power. I got the authority. Amen. That's why God still works with you, but all of your foolishness, he still works with you. Why? Because you got a body. And God says, uh, Moses, please quickly agree with me. And Moses finally said in chapter 4 of Exodus, okay, Lord, let's do it. God said, thank you very much. Let's go. <laughs> now, if you follow the story carefully, God did nothing without Moses announcing it. Have you ever read how the sea was opened? They were there in the wilderness. Pharaoh's army is coming behind them. There's the Red Sea, the Red Sea in front of them. And one million people getting ready to die. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. I promise you before the sun sets that every Egyptian you see coming to kill us will be dead. Then Moses ran behind the bush. Did you hear what I told them? (laughs) That's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Moses ran and was so afraid. He said, God, did you hear what I told them? God says, I heard everything you said. He says, now go ahead and do exactly what you said. In other words, you're the human and I'm the God. Uh If you say kill him, I'm going to kill him. (laughs) So then Moses, God bless you, brother. Because of that, you're going to have dead, free living just like me in Jesus' name. So Moses stands up on a rock with a piece of wood. His staff. Now, God cannot open the water without a human's permission. So God says, Moses, lift your rod. Okay. Bam. He said, now say open. Open. God said, thank you very much. (laughs) And the water's open. The people walk through the water on dry ground. And read the Bible carefully. It says, when they were all on the other side, the water was still open. And Pharaoh, coming to kill him still. And Moses wondering, why the water ain't closing? God said, because I can't close it without permission. It's in the Bible. 
So the Bible says Moses turned around, lifted his rod, and said, close. God said, thank you. Pop, everybody dead. Give God a hand. He needs you. He needs you. He needs you. So here's the laws of prayer. Number one, first law of prayer. The legal authority on earth is in the hands of humans, man. You got it. He gave it to you. Number two, God will never violate the law of his word. Number three, nothing will and can happen on earth without mankind's cooperation. That's why God needs you to pray. He needs you to pray so he could keep working in earth. If you stop praying, heaven shuts down. That's why Jesus begged us. He says, men ought always to be praying. Why? If you ever stop, heaven shuts down. Here's a verse that you never understood. Now you will understand it. Wherever any two of you, watch him now, he says, come together and agree concerning anything on the earth, then it can be done by your Father who is in heaven. You don't understand the words of Scripture. If you stop petitioning God, God stops working in earth. That's why you should pray without ceasing. What is prayer? Giving God permission to interfere in earth's affairs. Comprende? God, number four, cannot interfere in earth without cooperation of a human. At least number five, mankind holds the power of license on earth. You have the authority. God's got the power now, but you got the authority. Uh, Boy, it's time to go. I'm just getting started. Okay, let me share something with you that you, pro you probably didn't appreciate. I want you to go home. This is your homework till I see you again. Your homework tonight is to go home and read John chapter 5. Read it four times. In that chapter, Jesus explains this entire scenario. In that chapter, you remember that the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus because he had just finished working so many miracles. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he cast out demons, he cleansed the leper, he raised the young girl from the dead. I mean, he was just working miracles that whole day. I mean, he was working hard. And they were so shocked. So they asked him, in chapter 5 of John, by what authority, watch the words now, by what authority do you do these miracles? That's what they asked him. What was the word? Authority, not power. Authority. Jesus answered, I only do what I see my father do. Who is Jesus? A human with God on the inside. So he's legal. Now watch him. He said, I only do what I see my father do. My father works, so I work. He thinks it, I manifest it. Now watch him. He said, and you ain't saying nothing yet, he says. Because the time is coming soon when you'll see the Son of Man in all of his glory. Son of Man. Very important statement. Jesus used two terms to describe himself. Son of God and Son of Man. Two different terms. You don't understand the difference, do you? Son of God means this is the God side of me. 
son of man means this is the dirt side of me. And the dirt side makes the God side legal. So now they're asking him about authority. Authority is in the human side. So watch him. He says, you got to go and read it, man. It'll, it'll bless you. He said, the reason why I could do miracles is not because I am the son of God. That's in that chapter. Why? The son of God is illegal. He said, I do these miracles because I am the son of man. I have a body. I got the authority to do it. I have the license to do it. Give God a praise for the power of your body. So that's your homework. Go study it. What makes you dangerous is your body. Some of you wonder why God doesn't want you to lose your body. It's because God needs your body. Why did God provide healing? Not for your sake. For himself. Why would God bring you back from the dead and heal your bones and muscles? Why would God take cancer out of your gut and fix your liver? It ain't for you. That's why many people who are sick don't get healed. They want to get healed for themselves. Lift your hands in the air right now. Say, Lord, Lord heal, me heal me for your sake. You need this body. So heal me now. High blood pressure. Diabetes. Cancer. Cannot take this body. You need this body. I receive your healing now. Give him praise and receive that healing right now in the name of Jesus. That's why you pray for healing. This is not about you. It's about God. They're free in Jesus' name. He needs you. That's why he said, you must keep on praying. You stop praying, you shut heaven down. He said, whatever you bind on earth, then heaven can bind it. Whatever you loose. Somebody give God a big shout today. You get your power back, man. You got your power back. You got your power back. They're free in Jesus' name. They're free in Jesus' name. You are important to God. Give him a praise for making you so important. Come on, clap your hands and shout to Jehovah. You are his secret weapon. You are his battle axe. You are his authority on earth. You are God's secret weapon. Oh Lord, have mercy. I'm about to explode up here. Somebody explode with me. Give him praise. Give him glory. Come on, stop praying proud. Lift your hands and praise him. Pray without ceasing. Pray with all kinds of prayer and supplication. Pray. He needs you to pray. Dead free in Jesus' name. Dead free in Jesus' name. 
you will live long because of this day. Your disease will go away now because of this day of revelation. You are going to beat cancer. You're going to overcome diabetes. You're going to overcome high blood pressure because he needs your body. You're going to live and not die. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Don't let nobody stop you. Go ahead and praise him. He wants you to praise him right now. He's about to change this city. He's about to turn your neighborhood right side up. He's about to change your household. Oh, there's a prayer warrior in the place. There is a soldier prayer in this building. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, I feel some miracles going on in this room right now. You got to take your own miracle, brother. You got to take your miracle right now. Just receive healing. Prostate cancer. Come out. Breast cancer. Come out. He heals you for his own sake. Hallelujah. Because he needs your body. Lift your hands and just thank him for healing you from your crown of your head to the sole of your feet today. Come on, just thank him. Whatever disease you had, that you, you didn't even know you had it. He just took it away from you because you understand this revelation. You need my body. Oh, my spirit prayeth and rejoices in God, my Savior. For he that is mighty is doing great things right now. And holy is his name. Give him praise and lift your hands and glorify the God who made you his weapon. Hallelujah. Now you know why he needs you. Preserve me for yourself. Hallelujah. Be seated for two minutes. Keep your eyes on me, please. Friends of God is here working so much right now. I'm not going to finish this, so let me just close with something. Jesus made Christ legal. And he walked the earth for 33 years and six months. He was legal. God was legal because he had a body. But he knew that he had to give that body up. 
Christ knew that he would have to release Jesus. So Jesus took Christ to the cross. And Jesus died, not Christ. And before Jesus died, he had a talk with Christ. And he said to Christ, don't forsake me. You promised that if I lay myself down, you're going to come back and get me. And I hear Christ telling Jesus, I'll be back in three days to get you. Why? Because even though I'm going to die, my work is not finished. And I still need you to keep me legal. Because I got to come back and create the church. And so Jesus, the Bible says, and Jesus died. Not Christ. Christ left the body of Jesus. He went down into Hades, went to Gehenna. He went down into Sheol, in the depths of hell. He walks up to the devil. He grabs him by his belt and he yanks the three keys hanging on his belt. Death, hell, and the grave. He told the devil, I'll be back for you later. I just came for the keys. 